Okay, so I did a video about the banks and about how they're all too aware that the chip and pin system was compromised many, many, many years ago, yet they continue to deny it because naturally they will have to pay millions and millions of pounds back in compensation. And, you know, it, it's quite obvious what's going on there. As always, a video generated an email, and here it is. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Last one of the day, thank you very much for joining me again. Hope you're well, and as always, thank you very much for your support. Please make sure all the notification bells and everything are switched on. You're subscribed, hit the like button, leave comments, and have a chat with everyone in the community here. Very much appreciated for all your support. Well, as always, I get emails all the time, and I thank you very much for them. And this one is from somebody who related to a a uh, uh, thing I did, a uh, video I did about, uh, well, the bank scan with the chip and pin and the magnetic strips on the backs of the cards. This person will be referred to as Agent J. I've got a couple of agents, you know, who come to me with information every now and again. And I'll read you uh, the story here and uh, see if you can relate to this as well. I like these stories because they're real world experiences that we can get out to people. Andy. When Hubby and I were getting married back in 2006, we were out shopping when he said, do you want a fascinator? As we were looking in this shop window. You know what, fascinators? I find it fascinating that I never knew what a fascinator was for ages until my wife filled me in when she had one herself at our wedding. Fascinating. <laughs> Sorry about that. He went in and we bought the one we saw in the window. He used a Barclay card. He had an emergency card. He'd, he'd not used it for two years and he'd cleared the debt he had on it. I'm assuming by emergency card, use in case of emergency. Uh, it had a new, it had a new balance. Okay, I get it. So within 90 minutes, he had a phone call from Barclay card fraud squad. So bear in mind, they bought this fascinator. Um, the Barclay Card Fraud Squad asked them if they were in the USA as the card had been used six times in six different petrol stations within minutes of each other and suspiciously all for $29.99. They said what was suspicious was looking at a map, the petrol stations were all miles apart, not just round the corner from each other. Once the Barclay car guy had gone through security, he was laughing and joking, saying another one stopped. Asked if we buy in the UK shop and replied yes for the fascinator. So the guy from Barclay car said, interesting, and asked for confirmation of which shop we were in. I'm guessing it was the guy behind the counter in the shop somehow managed to swipe the car to get its detail and trying to be logical, must have emailed someone in America where somebody produced a card or cards pretty damn quick. We never went back to the shop and talking to people at work. They said it's a very dodgy shop. Love your channel, Andy. Thank you so much. Good information. Keeping us informed. Uh, yes, very dodgy indeed. Now, what I suspect could have happened there is... Was your card taken out of your sight for any reason? Was a photograph of the CVC number on the back and the details taken on the front uh, and emailed off to somewhere and they just clocked up a load of spending on it? Or alternately, was there some kind of sophisticated swipe the magnetic strip dodgy right in there? But 90 minutes, that's awfully quick, isn't it, to perpetuate some kind of scam? I'll add a story to this. Back in the day uh, before chip and pin and all this, where you still had to sign for stuff, I had a bank card delivered to me. And it was my ex, my girlfriend at the time I lived with. And we never got that bank card. What somebody had done, they'd signed her name on the strip and went on a spending spree. They first went round to the uh, petrol station round the corner filled up their car with f fuel right to the top, drove to London, Oxford Street of all places, and had a massive gigantic spend up. And I had an itemised statement of every single shop they'd been in. 
Uh, thankfully, I mean, I was with Nationwide Bank at the Building Society at the time, and they refunded every single penny once they realised what had happened. But phew, some dodgy goings on, isn't there? And no matter how far technology goes, they always find a way around it. Let me know what you think of this story. And if you've got one of your own, let me know. Anyway, as I said, that's me done for today. Thank you once again for all the support. Thank you for watching the channel, as always. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day. To blue.